the girl a runnin' in our group. She had a high-speedin' motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look out, buddy, hot rod and large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. AM 1420 WIMS Talk of the South Shore. You know, when we were little kids, it's funny. George, when we were little guys, making prank calls was very easy, wasn't it? Because oh, no, oh, it was a religion. You know what? <laughs> we, Every day after school. Yeah. We used to, Nick, I got to tell you, when, when George and I were in the younger era of our life, and I, I'm not speaking for George, but I know he's he's the little boy like I'm the little boy. Rick Federici, uh, Big George the Car Guy, Nick Cohn, AM 1420 WIMS, and AM 1060 WHFB were streaming online, free tune app. Okay, now that I've said that, Big George, when I was a little kid, and, and by the way, this goes back to when I went to Catholic school, was an altar boy, and my mother would say things like this to me with six kids. Rick Federici, you make up for all six of my kids. You are crazy. <laughs> because I would do you, stuff. You, you poked a hole in so many memories there. I'm thinking, do you have Sir Walter Raleigh in a can? Well, let him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, or Is how about... refrigerator running? We'll go catch it. Yeah. <laughs> And then what I used oh, to do, what I used to do, George, I used to then stick in there uh, the mom jokes, you know, like, uh, and I, I'm not going to do any on the air. Your mom, so blah, blah, blah. And I won't even go there. You, you get into it with your friends and it's oh, like, okay. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Well, geez, the crate calls. Nick, you, you got them, man. You got them wound up this morning with a crate call right off the bat. <laughs> it's I like, love you, it. you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, why is Nick calling me on the hotline? And I, I answered, I go, dude. What's up? Why aren't you? And he goes, I'm just calling the check in. I'm like, I'm going to kick his butt. He, he didn't ask if you had Sir Walter Raleigh in a can. No. <laughs> Nick, were you the good kid in your family or were you the bad kid? Because I could kind of picture you as half and half. Oh, no. I was the I was the golden goat. I was the one that everybody else followed behind me. Really? Better or worse. Oh, oh. That's, that's, that's a 50-50. I guess I'm lying a little bit. I had my moments. I was, uh, overall, I was, you know. I was good, but I had some some moments here and there. Which means George that he was a wuss and he was always good. <laughs> oh, I can tell you, I I can't remember I can't remember a week it went by when in my childhood I wasn't in a fight of some kind. <laughs> well, and and I or I would just be in so much trouble. I'd be like, and I and this is the funny thing, um, when you're when you're talking about life, in our family, you know, it was very like particular about how we acted and you know respect and all that good stuff. Which I, which I was always respectful and I always listened to my parents for the most part, unless I was just being radical, which was most of the time. But my mother would say to me, she'd get up and she'd say, "Okay, Rick Federici, for that." Dad, I need you to write a hundred times. Now, I'm sure the kids of today, even the grandparents of today, a lot of these people may remember, but not. But my mother would say to me, you, you know, I'd wake up the whole house on a Saturday morning, be bright and early, like five o'clock. I'd be like, you know, running around the house. My mother would say, sit down at the table right now. And I need you to write, you're not moving a hundred times. I will not wake up my family on a Saturday morning. So then I would, and Nick, did you ever have to do that as a young kid or no? Like, you know, write or, or do any of that I, stuff? I had to do that in oh school a couple times. George? Oh my God, Rick, kids kids today don't even have a pencil. They, You're they right. have to put it on their, their phone 100 times. Their tablet, right. So my they mother. Text it. Yeah. So my mom would say, do that. So on the on the loose leaf piece of paper, so paper kids, I don't even think you know what that is. No, I would, don't know what that is. I would actually write, you know, one through 100. I'd write, you know, I will be a good boy. But then I got smart. There are a couple ways I got smart. Listen, I think you're going to enjoy this. First off, I would do the 100 times, but then I got real, real smart about rubber banding my pens and pencils together so I'd have three. So when I would write one, it, picture three pens back to back, it would perfectly write on the lines, three. Oh my God, you're a, you're another Da Vinci for God. Okay, so, so not only did I do that, guys, but then my mother would say, okay, now I need you to be a good boy. Thank you, honey. I, you know, she'd give me a kiss. I love you, go about your day kind of deal. My mother would then go throw them in the garbage and not rip them up. I would go in the garbage and take them out. I take out the whole piece of paper <laughs> and I had stacks of like, I will be a good boy. I will not do this. You know, like I had them also, I'd ha I have a file. So she'd say, okay, you right. And I'd say, okay, do I have this one? So what you're saying, Rick, is you've been scamming the system ever since. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And did it teach me something about life? I'm sure. I'm sure it did. And I thoroughly enjoy life. And I'm, you know, 
But it's some of those memories, though, when you think back as a kid, I mean, I can't tell you the crazy things that we, we used to happen in Catholic school. I remember getting busted. And I, I say this very, very, you know, and any of you young ones out there listening right now, Uncle Ricky's just explaining some of the stuff that went on. And I don't want you to follow Uncle Ricky. I just want you to listen. <laughs> Parents, if you want to turn me down, turn it down in three, two, one. Big George, Nick, and Rick, AM 1420, AM 1060. Okay. So... I was in, gosh, I had to be second or third grade. And in our Catholic school, we didn't have a gym because it was a very tiny school. I had like 15 kids in my class. Like my graduating class was 16 in eighth grade. So that being said, we would go down into what would be the bingo room and it had low ceilings. Well, there was this really awesome cafeteria. Well, I just have to tell you this. I love the ladies. So I got busted in the cafeteria kitchen with two girls and we were, kissing all right now there's nothing wrong with that but this think about it goes back to second grade so i got busted kissing them and just as we're doing that who walks in to the kitchen but the pastor of the church and the teacher oh boy I, I, you know in some certain countries you're married already all right kissing in the church mr federici get your butt to the office right now i go to the office they actually called my parents my father and i love god rest his soul silvio uh they made my parents come in. And so when we're in the office, this is why I love my parents to say, this is what I think in my head has always stuck for my life because I'm all about my kids and sticking up for them. The pastor goes to my parents, now your son got you know caught kissing girls. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, who cares? They're hot. And I, you I know, went to Lutheran school. Well, oh, so, that's, so. You know, that's Catholic light. Yeah, is what you're, that is. you're absolutely. <laughs> so he said. In eighth grade, we got caught drinking wine. Oh, well, I could tell you <laughs> stories <laughs> about that, too, and eating hosts, uh, being an altar boy. So anyway, so the, so the pastor says, okay, uh, for your punishment, in front of my parents, for your punishment, I need you to kiss the wall. Kiss, like kiss the wall, <laughs> like make out with the wall. And I look at my parents and I'm like, I'm not doing that. And I mean, you think about it. This goes back to, I was born in 66. So uh, this is like early seventies where you don't, you know, you could get hit in school, everything. And oh, I God, said, yeah. I'm not doing it. And my parents go, they stuck out for me and they sent me home for the rest of the day. And that was that. But I, from that, I mean, I, oh, my parents always stuck out for me as I do. And I hope you parents and grandparents do out there. You got to listen. It's life. But it's one of the things that stuck. So I can see Nick. I can see Nick going, oh, 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 oh. come on, Nick. Oh, 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 oh. I, I don't think I've ever had to kiss a wall that I can remember. Yeah. That's kind nobody, of a, yeah, nobody kind ever of a told strange... me to kiss the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Big George, I want to hear about what's coming up uh, this upcoming weekend. You've got uh, Big George, the car guy, 928 car guys. People are loving your show on WIMS, WHFB, 10 a.m. Central on IMS, 11 a.m. Oh. Eastern. Uh, Nick, I know you're getting a lot of feedback from listeners up in WHFB territory, huh? Absolutely. And we love we love doing it. I mean, it's just fun again. Radio's fun again for me. I'm enjoying myself. We're gonna go electric Woo! tomorrow. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna dress T Rex up, my dinosaur. I'm gonna dress him up like a bolt of lightning. Wow! And we're gonna be all electric tomorrow. We're gonna talk pros and cons, and I'm gonna open it up to the listeners and let them say what they want to say. There's a lot of people out there that don't know enough about the electric cars, or even the self driving cars, which is coming up faster than you think. That wow. It's time when we talk about this. It's time we get it out there. I am uh, with you on that. Nick, what do you think, man? Because you're getting a lot of insight. You were with me at the uh, Carl Lissick event. Electrics everywhere. Yeah, that's been that's been the hot topic is people chiming in about the electric car thing. I think you're freaking people out a little bit because it's kind of a, you know, who would have thought it would happen in our generation. But I saw the the Facebook picture you left of the uh, the self-driving car, and it's I don't know if I'd even fit in that. You're a big guy, too. You think? We would fit in a car like that? Are they going to have to make special oh, absolutely cars? Absolutely not. You'd have, I might be able to get in, but you'd never get me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be stuck in there for life. Uh, <laughs> and I, I there wasn't they, even uh, a windshield on that car, Nick. Did you see that? Yeah, it was all it was black. Like, uh, I mean, everything. You didn't have because it was supposed to drive for you. You just get in and close the door. Looking no, more and more no like the Jetsons wheel, every no time. Nothing. Yeah, and that's isn't that weird when you just mentioned the Jetsons? Thinking back as a little boy, Nick, obviously you're a young youngster, but man, even then and in my life I would have thought, man, this will never happen. And quite honestly, some of the weird stuff that's happening with technology, it's like holy cow. Uh it's it's fascinating. Now, Rick, you're on the age. Rick, you're of the age, you're on the brink. Yeah. I'm a little older. I'm about ten years old, about fifteen years older actually. And I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I, I could not get in a car and let it drive me anywhere. Uh, that would I, freak me out. Now, your generation is like teetering on the wall saying, well, you know, maybe we'll do this, you know. 
because it's going to happen in your time. Uh, Nick, I, I, let's ask you then. Uh, you're the youngster here. You're you there. Know, you go, young twenties. What do you think about it? Like, I mean, are you all about it or what? I will go as far as to get on a train because that's a direct A to B link. I mean, I know where I'm going and that follows a track, but to have a self-driving car that's just just going off a GPS grid and just kind of all over the place, I I still don't understand. I guess it'd be one of those things you'd have to try it out before you could get into it, but. If a deer jump, you know, jumps out in front of this car, how is it going to know to stop? If the roads oh. are icy, how is it going? All this stuff just comes to mind, and I, I don't trust the computer to, to hold me in a little box and fly me around at 70, 80 miles an hour and have something like that happen and hope that it would have human-like instincts to stop. You know, I know well, it's just Nick, programmed. Well, we're going to cover all that tomorrow. You, you know, that the whole thing about the deer jumping out, the, the people they figure that are going to are going to benefit the most from self-driving cars are motorcycle riders. Because people half the time can't see them, but this self-driving car can always see them. Uh, real quick, George, Suzanne from the Three Oaks just texted me. She said, can you please put T-Rex on camera? I want to see him, look what he looks like in the costume. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> there you go. By the way, Facebook Live with Big George tomorrow. WIMSradio.com, WHFBradio.com. Free tune-in radio apps for both radio stations. And, of course, on the dial itself, AM 1420 and AM 1060. Big George, we will see you tomorrow on the dial. Keep it up. And, of course, don't forget, folks, you could live stream it and all that good stuff. So, Big right, George, guys. we'll see you. Happy motoring. Yes. Take her easy. Thank you. <laughs> See you Monday. Bye. All right. AM 1420 WYMS Michigan City, a Gerard Media Company, streaming live at WYMSRadio.com.